You can correct all sorts of differences in skin tone in Adobe Photoshop, as well as take some of the sting out of sunburn using simple addition and subtraction in Adobe Photoshop. Hint, it's blend modes. And you can also turn this whole thing into an action if you feel so inclined. Let's talk about it. Okay, create a couple new layers to add our color samples to. You're gonna use the eyedropper to sample a color from the good skin tone and add that color to one layer. Then choose a, a sample from the bad skin tone and add that to the other layer. We can overlap these little samples of color and we're gonna set the top layer, which is gonna be the bad skin tone, to the subtract blend mode. Now we create another new layer just above the photo. We're gonna name this layer Add, and then set this layer to the blend mode, Linear Light Add. Now, in the full video, we're gonna talk about another blend mode that works well, uh, but we're not gonna get into that here. Then sample that color that's created when we subtracted those two colors together a moment ago, and we're gonna paint that onto that Add, that Linear Light layer. And just use some masking, opacity sliders, maybe a curves adjustment layer here and there, a few other small adjustments to get things dialed in just rightly. And we're gonna cover all of that as we dive into Photoshop and get started right now. Okay, here we are in Photoshop where all the fun begins. We're gonna begin this by creating two new layers. We're gonna name the first layer uh, Correction, and we're gonna name the other layer Current, as in like the current problem that we're trying to correct, of course. Now, we like the skin tone here of the model on the left. Uh, ultimately, let's say we wanted to take her skin tone and put it here on the model on the right. But before we get to that, the model here on the left, well, she has some issues of her own in that the face is a bit different than her shoulder and her neck area here. So let's correct that. Uh, this will be probably what you run into the most. And this is where this technique is particularly useful, but there's a lot of fun you can have with it uh, too. So here's what we wanna do. We want to select somewhere up here on her face. And we also need to select somewhere down here on her shoulder. So grab your eyedropper tool and we wanna change the sample size. Uh, mainly you don't wanna be using point sample. So if you can get away with 11 by 11, that's great. 31 by 31 is amazing. It all depends on how big your image is and how detailed it is. Um, 11 by 11 might be better if you're like right up against an eyebrow or something where that brown is going to affect the average color. So I'm going 31 by 31 and I want to also bring my info panel out here. So I'm going to bring my info panel out uh, right here and I want to examine what I'm sampling. So let's hold down shift um, and just maybe drop a sample point right there. And it's going to give us a readout in RGB. I'm going to click on the little eyedropper and say, give this to me in HSB, hue, saturation, brightness, because I'm most concerned right now with brightness. So my brightness is 89%. That's cool. I'm usually looking to sample somewhere, not in the highlight, not in the shadow. If you can get like the fall off of highlight, right? Like the highlight is here. She so a very soft light on her face, but the highlight is falling off to a mid tone over here. And that's, I'm trying to catch some of that light fall off. And that's an 89% brightness. So I want to also look for an area that's about 89% brightness down here on her shoulder or, you know, her neck area. So I'm just going to hold down shift and drop a point right here. I'm going to also change this point to HSB color. And that's 90 percent pretty close. Now you can hold down your command or control key and move your point around. So we need this to be a little bit darker. Uh, there we go. That's 90 percent and there's 89 percent. That doesn't, it doesn't need to be exact. I'm just kind of fussing with it here to show you that it can be done. Uh, what I want to do now is sample my number one point up here, the good skin, and we're going to paint a dot of this on the correction layer. So I'm going to zoom out just a touch. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can use the elliptical marquee tool and draw a circle. You can use the brush tool. I'll just make a nice hard edge brush, whatever's easy, um, and maybe make the brush a little bit bigger. And I'm going to paint a dot of that right there. So that's kind of the good skin tone that we like. The opacity of my brush tool is set to 50%. Not good. We want that to be 100%. So let me just undo and paint a dot of the good skin. There we have it. And then I'm going to hold down my alter option key and I'm going to sample point number two down here. And I'm going to put this up on the current layer. And I'm just going to overlap the dots like that. You can see they're very close, right? Color wise, tone wise, they're close, but they're different. And we can see that difference reflected if we take the time to just look at the difference between shoulder area and her face. Uh, we want to fix that. Uh, so of course, current is the layer which we're fixing or the color which we're fixing. Correction is the color we're using to fix it. How do we fix this? Well, this is where this idea of uh, using some math is involved. We're looking to see 
uh, we're basically going to subtract the front color from the back color, the current color from the correction, and then we're going to add what's missing back in. So we're subtracting and then adding. So we're going to take this current layer and we're going to set it to the blend mode subtract. And what we get is a new layer that's created here in the middle. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and sample that. Now I like to just check this color and make sure that we're not getting a full complete pitch black and it's going to be pretty dark, you know, four, five, six on the brightness, but something like that is fine. Um, if you want to be picky, you can even bump up the brightness a little bit uh, and hit OK. We're going to play with the luminosity later and just make sure that's all dialed in. Uh, I kind of usually don't recommend it, but if it's your first time doing it, maybe give it a shot and see. Uh, OK, we're going to add a new layer here and I'm going to name this layer Add. And this is where we're going to add back in now this color. And we can see that it's a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, but mainly blue, right? Like 15 parts blue. So it's it's really, uh, that's, that's where we're, that's what we're correcting and we're adding back in down here. So now for this add layer, we're gonna use another blend mode. We're gonna set this to linear dodge add. Now you could also use color dodge. It's a little bit different, um, but it works just as well. And in fact, I find that certain skin tones, certain models, certain lighting conditions, uh, color dodge actually, is a more pleasant look than linear dodge add. It just all depends. We're gonna go with linear dodge add here. Uh, I'm gonna grab my brush tool. I'm gonna zoom in down here on her skin. Uh, we maybe will make the brush a little bit smaller and also softer edged. And then I'm just gonna begin painting down here over the skin. And you can see it's just gonna get rid of that weird kind of funky color cast. Now I'm painting up over her face, but I would use a mask to just get rid of that and fix anything that is, uh, you know, kind of overlapping and running into another part of her body. Maybe also her hand could use a little bit of color correction as well. And we don't need to be perfect here. This is just all about showing you the example of how this works. Um, I'll even grab the, well, I'm not gonna grab the eraser tool. We're gonna use a mask here and I'm gonna use my brush tool. We're painting with the color black and I'm just gonna paint here over the bottom part of her chin as well as up here in the, the shadow of the fingers. I just don't like the way it looks. So here we can look at this and shut off the add layer and turn it back on and we can see a huge difference. Now, is it perfect? No, we can see here in our thumbnail that there's definitely some areas we missed. We're not worried about being totally 100% perfect here. We're just concerned with looking at it and saying, yeah, we got that pretty close. Now, if I set this to color dodge, you can see still really good. And it does a great correction. You just preserve a little bit more of that original color that may or may not be what you want to do. So I'm going to leave this on linear dodge add for now. Now, what if we wanted to take her skin tone and bring it to some other model or some other situation? Let's take a look at how to do that. Uh, we can just leave our, our same current and uh, correction layers. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, so correction, we're going to use that same color. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take the current layer and I'm just going to drag it over here. We're going to paint a new dot uh, at, over here off of her forehead. But what do we need to be interested? We still want to get somewhere around that 80, 90 percent or 89 to 90 percent brightness. So let's just shift click somewhere up here off the diffused highlight. We're going to set it to HSB for hue saturation. Okay, that's 93 percent. That's pretty bright. Let's bring it over here into the shadow a little bit more. Uh, something, something like that. Maybe a little bit darker. Ooh, it's a little too dark. I don't know. We don't need to be too crazy. And then I'm going to sample this color and we'll go ahead and paint this. Again, we're on our current layer. Now we've been using the brush tool, so it's really soft and it's really small. Let's bring it back to 400 pixel hard and let's paint over this. And we can see there is our subtracted color. Hit the letter I to grab our eyedropper tool. Let's see what we've got. Okay, here we've got a brightness of 11. So this is going to be pretty bright. Uh, we may want to tone it down to something like 7, 8, somewhere around there. And we can see we're going to be adding a lot of green. Now, that what, what that's telling us is the difference here between these images is a, a bit of green, some blue but a bit of green. Now, what it's also telling us is it's in general blue plus green together. We're going to be adding a bit more like a yellow green color to her skin. And I have to warn you, it's going to be particularly noticeable. I'm just going ahead and adding another add layer here. It's going to be particularly noticeable because our eyes here have gotten used to looking at this particular skin tone that she has. And I can just tell looking at it that her skin tone is dominated with red and magenta. Well, the opposite of magenta, for instance, is green. So if we add a little bit of red and green to an image that our eyes have adjusted to looking at that is a lot of magenta, it's gonna be a noticeable, what appears to be green uh, color cast. So we're just gonna keep that in the back of our head. Let's set this to linear dodge add, grab the brush tool here, uh, and the same thing. You know what, in fact, I'm just gonna paint over this. I already have a mask to mask over just her skin. 
and let's just paint this color in and see what it does. Okay, so it's brightening it up, making it look kind of wild. Let's go to channels. I'm just gonna command or control click on that selection. I made it before and I'm just gonna add a layer mask. So we can see there's before, there's after. And you can see uh, it's really adding a lot of brightness. So the luminosity is a major issue here in terms of the way her skin looks. We can't even really judge how much of a change this made to her skin because the luminosity is so different. So what do we want to do here? Well, we don't want to select the layer like that. Uh, we want to go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to throw a curves adjustment layer on here. You could do any number of things. Um, we're going to keep it pretty simple here. We're just going to say, hey, set, go, go to luminosity blend mode, just affect the brightness. We've already hopefully gotten color and tone, well, really color uh, the way or close to where we want it. We just want you to fuss with brightness here. Uh, and we could go ahead and start pulling down on the brightness. And we're going to we're gonna mask it to her in just a moment uh, and maybe pull some of the brightness out of those highlights as well, almost flatten her skin out a little bit. It makes the whole image look muddy because it's not masked. Hold down your Alter Option key. We can just duplicate that mask, drag it right up and drop it on the Curves Adjustment layer. Photoshop's going to say, hey, you really want to replace the mask? Indeed, I do. And now we can see that that brightness adjustment has been made to her skin. So there's before and there is after. We've changed the tone of her skin. Skin's probably a little too dark. So we could just reduce the opacity a little bit, uh, something like so. So we made a, a pretty quick adjustment, both correcting model on the left, getting more of that tone and color from her face down to her uh, shoulders, and then model on the right, just straight up copy and color and some tone from model on the left. The last example here that I wanna show you is something like this where we have somebody who has very obvious sunburn. This is another very practical application of this technique. What I have done is I have sampled here the good skin that I found on her shoulder where she was covered up and didn't have a burning. And then also here on her cheek where we have pretty substantial burning. You can see I've tried to line up the brightness a little bit, 88 to 87%. And then I've got this color in the middle. I've got my add layer already set up, right? Our current layer is subtracting from our correction layer. The add layer here is set to linear dodge add. I'm going to sample that color in the middle. I grab my brush tool. Now, I also should say normally you would probably try to make a little bit of a, a decent selection of the redness in the skin. I'm not taking the time to do that here. That would be a completely other tutorial. And then we're just going to paint over. Well, I want to go ahead and right click, make sure I have a nice soft edged brush. Uh, I'm going to make sure also that I sample that new color. And then we're just going to paint over the sunburn that she has. And you can see as we go through this, we're just really wiping out all of that bad red tone in her cheeks, up here on her forehead. And again, this would be where you could go in with the mask. You could even, you know, use blend if on this layer uh, to get rid of this color where it runs into shadows and things like that. But very quickly, you just, not everything's corrected. Maybe there's still some luminosity adjustments that would need to be made here, but we've really taken the sting out of that sunburn. I mean, you see what we've done and you can see it's it's messy. It probably, honestly, you could take the whole layer probably and blur it wholesale and then mask it and corral it in. Uh, but you can see what's what's been done uh, and just how much of a difference you can make very, very quickly using this take technique. So you sample the good bits of skin, throw it on a correction layer, find something that needs to be corrected, set it to subtract, when you overlay those samples, you're going to get this new, albeit very dark color. If I sample this color, we're going to see this is super dark as well. Brightness of 14. But you can kind of see there's just, there's a bit of blue in there. And when we paint back over using linear dodge add, we're adding back the bit that is missing. Um, and you can see it, you can do all sorts of different corrections and skin tonal uh, adjustments and changes, uh, kind of whatever you want to do. Well, that is going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and getting all the way to the end. I hope the video was both fun and informative and make sure that you come back for the next one. Get it? Got it? Good.